goodness, with face, pat, and tiz. The top MC of the 2000s. Our tournament continues. I can't stand your way. Our tournament continues. <laughs> if you watched last episode, what he just said is going to make so much more sense to you, and it's going to be hilarious. So go back and watch episode uh, 45. Uh, I would say actually watch the past couple of episodes, and uh, I think it's episode 38 um, when we first started this conversation. But basically, uh, this is where we've gotten to on our journey. Uh, we're now through the quarterfinals. We're going into the semifinal bracket tonight, so we'll be setting our final four tonight. Um, the way we got here is we started establishing. We well, we would talk we would talk about hip hop a lot on the show anyway, but um, it's when we wanted when, when we have conversations and debates about you know our favorite artists and who we think is greatest about this or whatever, we wanted to establish some criteria to do that. So we came up with three criteria. We came up with uh your marketability, your, your earning potential. So like how how much is your face card and your your brand drawing record sales, um, drawing concert sales, merchandise sales, brand deals, endorsements, like how much is your face earning you money and revenue? Um, and then we went into uh, lyricism. So how well do you put words together? Your, your entendres, your metaphors, your similes, your, your, how well you put idioms together? Um, yeah. Your cadence, your flow, your your the rhyme patterns you choose, the the way you ride a beat, uh, all of that, you know, just how well mm. you write. Um, and you could not have a ghostwriter; you had to have your own original lyrics to be considered for lyricism. Um, and then we had um, your overall MC, your stage presence, how well you project and get your point across through your presence as you're delivering your words. So how much you sell a bar, whether it be a cappella on stage, whether it be on a beat even, like how much are you making me feel what you're saying? As opposed to me just hearing what you're saying and saying, oh, that's a good way to do that. I actually feel it. Um, so yeah, we came up with those three criteria. And when we did that, then it was just like, well, obviously we got to use these shits now. So let's do that. So uh, we thought it would be too big of a task because we had already kind of behind the scenes been talking. It was just like, we're going to be all over the place if we try to do like the greatest MC of all time straight out. So we spread it mm -hmm. into two categories. We started right now with the greatest MC of the 2000s. From here, we're going to go to the greatest MC of all time. I mean, of the greatest MC before 2000. And then we're going to have those two and have the pause squad help us decide the greatest MC of all time from that. We've already started, like I said, we've gotten through the first uh, few rounds. We did the play-in, we did the um, opening round, and now we've done the quarterfinal round. So we're going to now give our picks tonight for the quarterfinals. The pod squad has voted, and I have their votes in front of me as well. As you guys know, each of us gets a vote, and the pod squad, their choice counts as two votes. So you have to have three out of the five, or basically a majority decision, in order for that MC to move on to the next round. So it is possible for one partner and the pod squad to outvote the other two partners. So it's important that you guys vote, get your votes out there. I saw a few more votes this week, but let's get the votes out there. Um, the link will be on the Twitter, on our social media, and under this video and podcast as soon as it drops. So get out, vote, 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 so your voice can be heard. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Right now, we are at the top eight MCs, and we are looking at Kendrick Lamar versus Rick Ross, Pusha T versus Royce the 5'9", Joe Button, Faces Favorite, versus J. Cole, and Big Sean versus 2 Chainz. Like I said, the pod squad is focused, but it's time for the partners to weigh in. Which one of those do y'all want to start with first, or should we just go from the top? to the bottom and let me make sure i share this with the family i want to make sure the family can get on, we're gonna start on this easy. as well let me we're gonna start easy. With easy and then go to difficult we're gonna start with um big sean and two big sean and two shane on the board right now so 
Um, anyone of y'all wanna go first? I'm, or? Gonna, I'm gonna take it first. Okay. I'm gonna say, um, when it comes to their um marketability, I'm gonna say two chains, Titty Boy. Um, he's been doing this thing, yeah. and he's been doing this thing well. Um, his crossover marketability is very well. He's accepting a lot of different markets. I mean, his entrepreneurial game is where it needs to be so he can push himself in different realms where I feel that Big Sean hasn't and can't. Um, don't get it wrong, Big Sean is profitable. He can't put himself in different lanes as well, but the lanes that two chains can get in, I don't believe that Big Sean can or has the potential to get in those lanes. Um, okay. As far as lyricism, I'm going to have to go with two chains. Um, his wordplay is just ridiculous when it comes to his caliber of rapper or MC, I should say. Um, nowhere near God level, but his ability to take a word and make it do what it do, I should say, is on a level that Big Sean isn't. Now, once again, devil's advocate, Big Sean is a good lyricist because, once again, he wouldn't have made it this far if he wasn't. But better than two chains, he is not. Um, stage performance, hands down, two chains. No words ever needed after that. Just hands down, two chains. So I'm giving it a 3 0, two chains. Okay, okay. 3 0, two chains. We got our first 30, dirty 30 of the evening. Pat, Pat, how, what say ye, McGee? Um, I, I think two chains is going to win this anyway. I explain why, but I know you ain't going to pick Big Sean. So, <laughs> um, let me just explain. Two chains got him on marketability. Two chains got him on stage performance. Lyricism is was a coin flip to me because Big Sean got some lines. It's just that I don't like how he flow. Like two chains stays on beat. Big Sean, he stays on beat, but he tries to do too much and say too many words in between each lines, and it throws him off. He tries to force uh, it. Off beat. Yeah, he tries to force it. And I, I I feel like it's a lot of potential in Big Sean, but, yeah, I'm going to just give it a two chain. So, yeah, 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 I'm going to the next one. <laughs> okay. So, so yeah. Two one, I, no, I, y'all nah, both got all two three. All right. Um. Well, this is where I'm at with it. I'm gonna say where do I want to start? This is. I had to listen to a couple of their tracks over the week kind of just refresh because I hadn't really listened to either one of them in a minute. I got them as a tie on lyricism. They're both really good at what they do. Um, if I had to look at battle rap, I would say Big Sean is more of a a mix. Like he punches and talks to him. Whereas um, two chains is more of a straight puncher like an ab, where it's just punch, 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 punch. And both are masters at what they do, so I like it. Um, Similac. Yeah, I had to give them a tie on that. Yes. Um, as for the stage show, stage show, I gave the two chains. Um, I've seen that nigga do some wild shit on stage. Um, so I definitely gave that to two chains. Um, and then for, uh, for marketability, I had to give it to two chains as well. Um, two chains faces everywhere. That nigga is on everything. He's like Frank's red hot. He put that shit on everything. Like he's on at like, like places that like he's like Snoop Dogg. Like the shit that you be like, what are you doing on this channel? 
and he's hosting someone there. So it's like, I just see him too much to, for me not to, like, I don't know what real estate or whatever Big Sean got, but as far as, like, making money off your face card, 2 chains has become a master of that. So I definitely got 2 chains. So, yeah, 2 chains. And the pod squad, they picked Big Sean. So we have our first upset of the night. Let's see where we go from here, y'all. Two I chains move on. Like, I kind of felt like that was going to happen with the pod squad. Two chains? I didn't see the Big Sean win coming. I ain't going to lie. I was like, oh. Oh, big I still think it's. I think it's, I still thought it might be a possibility that. Uh, I just like change music more. Problem. Man. <clears throat> like I said, lyricism. I think they're just different. But you said what? Joe Button. And fucking J Cole. Oh, so fucking J Cole. And no telling where we about to go with this. Huh? Do you want to go first or last, baby? <laughs> I'll let one of y'all go first. Okay. Um I, so this was actually a tough oh go ahead, Pat. I ain't gonna oh, put your uh, go ahead. Me, I'm gonna be real simple. Um pretty much. Uh lyricism is very hard to say or whatever. So I I really feel like both of them touch on uh life subjects. They both have bars, you know what I'm saying? Like, as far as content go, they're, they're very versatile or whatever. So I got to look at other stuff. Uh, Joe Budden is marketable. But we're talking about rap. What he's marketable is at is in the podcast game right now and in social media mm. and stuff like that, which if he was actually in the game still, and he was actually okay. doing music, it would make him more marketable as far as a rapper. But he hasn't done that yet. He hasn't chose not to do that yet. So as far as like social medias and the podcast game, he is very marketable. But we're talking about rap. We're, we're talking about rap. J. Cole, J. Cole mentor is Jay-Z. One. He's under Rock Nation. Two, he his 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 stats in the game having platinum albums with no features or, or whatever. He just has way more stats than Joe Button has, and I feel like the reason why is Joe Button was in that age where you just didn't mix shit all the way. You just put the shit out so you can have your, your, your cause you know what I'm saying? At that time we were more listening to lyrics than sounds. Now we're more listening to sounds than lyrics or whatever. And I would say stage presence, it definitely go to cold or whatever. So to tell you the truth, I, lyricism and marketability, they're kind of like, they're kind of tied up for me, but it's just the simple fact that Joe Button marketability is not in rap no more. It's in podcasts and social media that I have to give it to Cole. And just okay. Cole, Cole is just having an awesome two, three years lately. Like he's the only, he's the only rapper that ends up being the basketball player. And then the NBA starts looking at him. And then drops a platinum album. And then drop a tour, one of the first tours that ever came out. And then, and then maybe not the top MC, but the top rap artist at the time just drops yeah. in. Yeah. And he just does not do that for everybody. He did it, but he did it after he did a freestyle, after J. Cole did a freestyle on that artist beat. And, and he had to come in and hey, hey man, you the greatest person in the world. I don't want no smoke. You my friend. You are a great person. Why We're can't we skin. be friends? Why can't we be friends? When the Copals be laughing their ass off right now with you singing that shit. I know Sean. Sean, I know. Yep. Yeah, when my brother listen to this, he gonna be laughing <laughs> just because you did that. Anyway, so long story short. I'm going to give it to Cole because he has more potential, more prowess, and more stats or whatever. I feel like if, 
if Joe Button probably would have the same backing as Cole did, pretty much, he would probably be in a higher light as far as rap go. But his personality, all his antics and shit kind of got in the way of that shit. So, yeah. Okay. And Face don't like him. So, um, I, I think. <laughs> I like his. Go? I like his podcast. You know. Or should I jump? I'll take it. I, okay. I'll go ahead. Now. <laughs> go this is ahead. the most biased voting up. Yeah, it's, I know, it's right? Biased, but God, fuck Warning, boss, people who be coming in here. I ain't gonna listen to me as soon as he said. It's about to happen right now, so you can go ahead and uh. Click off if you triggered by that because uh face about to say some shit because he don't like Joe Button. Like I've always said, opinions is like assholes. We all got one. So most of them stink. Y'all may think mine stink right now, but guess what? I don't care because it's mine. I don't give a fuck. And if you don't like it, you can fast forward. Listen to the next one's opinion. But right now is mine. I don't like Joe Button. Um, I, I don't like his lyrics. I, I, I don't like his stage performance. And I don't like his marketability. But <laughs> I don't like his marketability. <laughs> I'm going to try to be as unbiased as possible right now. Okay. Your phone is being unbiased or whatever that is. Your phone like Joe Button. Yeah. <laughs> Your phone said, you going to get Joe Button, damn it. Fuck that shit. Um, so, as I was saying, Wait. if I'm giving an unbiased view, it's kind of even. But J. Cole is still ascending, where the other dude is plateaued and going on a downward slope. So, as J. Cole is still has um, his lyricism, his lyricism is still maturating. And achieving new heights, Joe Button is not. Um, so on lyrics, I'm going to give it to Cole because he's doing things right now that Joe, I don't think Joe can do. Um, overall, I'm going to say Joe is a good lyricist. I may not like him, but I'm not going to hate on a person's ability. Um, he is a good lyricist, but better than Cole. It's hard for me to say Cole's Cole inches them out by this much. He just inches them out. Um, marketability, Cole being who he is and his personality and the aura of him and what he puts out about himself and what he tries to do in the community, that makes him able to step in different realms that Joe Button can't. But on the other hand, Joe Button's personality puts him in different arenas that the positivity of J. Cole won't allow him to. So overall marketability as a person and as a whole, I will go with Joe Button. But in the MC realm, I'm going to go with J. Cole. So per this contest and per this list we're going for, per our rules, I have to say J. Cole. But if we were just outside of our rules and we were being a tad, and their marketability, I would go with Joe Button. Now, stage performance and the MC ability, the ability to sway that crowd and give them that feel. Fuck Joe Button. I don't feel he has none. <laughs> none at all. None. Just, just it. Fuck Joe Button. I don't feel he has no ability to move no crowd. Um, none. No, I've seen. <laughs> I was just looking at him. I'm not gonna pump nothing up. I'm not gonna get down with nothing. Yo, oh God, Joe Budden stole your girl back in fourth grade or something. Yo, like what the yeah. fuck, yo? <laughs> I'm so angry with uh, this Joe Budden. Yeah. But now, J Cole, on the other hand, um, he has that ability to sway the crowd. Like people get emotionally in tune. They feel his music. It gives them some some relation of what they used to go through. From like he he got that starter for the bottom type feel. So, but he's grounded. He hasn't outgrown his shoes, I should say. He's still 
about your community. He's still saying what he needs to say in a real way, not sugarcoating, but giving it to you in a way that you can understand. It. You feel me? Everybody can understand. It. Not in a too complicated way, like you see some lyrics, some lyricism, or some lyricist, excuse me, give you their give you their message, and you gotta break it down because it's so complicated, but the flow is so tight. His or J. Cole in reference, give it to you. His flow is so tight, but everybody understands him. That's, that's why he's people mess with him on such a wide scale. You got people from all age ranges that mess with J. Cole. Feel like. So you'll see all age ranges at his concerts. Joe Budden, I, I don't know who the fuck goes to a Joe Budden concert. Why the fuck would you? So sort of waste your money. Um, more so like a slaughterhouse. That's me. Now, if you're going to see the collective, hey, it's the collective that drew you in. It wasn't Joe Button. And you need to realize that, people. It wasn't Joe Button that drew you to their concert. It was the collective of artists there and their collective songs together. It was not Joe Button. Realize yeah. it. Anybody who's watching this, right? Face you crazy, face, you know, Joe Button. No, realize I don't know, sir. They're going to let you have it in the comments. Let me have it. And all my listeners on Anchor, leave us a voice message. Let us know what you think. Let me know. I'm just saying, man, no with your button. No. Now, if you watch this reality show and all that other stuff, you may be a Joe Button fan, but we're talking about his music and his MC ability. No, Joe Button. No. Like, I'm talking to my kids. No. Uh, uh. No. I, I, Never said he was trash. Did not say that. But no. So I would say two, three. I mean two, one. Excuse me. J. Cole. Only because only because I can't give that you feel me? Well, excuse me. Rewind that. Three O. J. Cole, because I can't give that one to um, marketability. Got it. So, J. Cole wins 3-0 only because marketability can't be given to um, Fuckboy on totality. Oh, man. I can have my own damn opinion. Shit, everybody in the world, dude. That was a lot. Um, my you didn't go as hard as I thought you were, though. I would say that was much more objective than I thought it would be. So kudos See? to you. See? Um, <laughs> I, like I thought it was going to be a I lot more F-bombs drop. I don't like what I don't like. If I don't like it, I don't like it. Like, yeah, I was upset when I said I ain't like Nas. So what? I'm a, I'm a Southern hater. I like Southern music. So what? I love Jay-Z. I love Jada Kids. I love Beans. They from up north. What now? Well. But not Joe Button. Um, I'll start with lyricism. The lyricism was hard for me, um, but then I remembered. J. Cole is responsible for one of my top favorite bars of all time. The flow cold as the shoulders of gold digging hoes when a broke nigga proses. Told y'all don't focus, man. That is the motherfucking, like to, to spit that bar on a song with Jay-Z, on an album of that magnitude at that moment, as a person that's pretty much an unknown in the game, said everything to me and he's been living up to that since. Like he's, he has more pockets than Joe. So I had to give him the edge on that. Um, as far as lyrical content, pretty much neck and neck. Um, but it's really more the flow patterns, cadences, and areas that Cole can get into that I haven't heard it's from Joe yet. Right. So uh, lyrically, I gave it to Cole. Um, Marketability-wise, I didn't separate. Um, I didn't separate them from each other as far as like your market a bit outside. Cause like with two chains, I considered shit like him doing uh TV shows and shit like that 
how much how expensive shit is. Like, I look at the podcast and shit as a flip off of what Joe Budden did. Like, because even when he was rapping, when it, like, because I look at the totality of his career, not just now, but like, Pump It Up mm-hmm. days, shit was everywhere. The nigga song is on fucking jock jams, which means every arena in the country plays that shit at some point to get the crowd hype. So people that don't even, might not even realize they love Joe Budden, be it the crowd, huh, 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 on the dance cam. Um, he basically, he was the one of the first big YouTubers. Like, a lot of the reason that we watch celebrities and that type of shit now and the way we do is because of the shit he was doing on YouTube back when he was still dropping mood musics and shit with Tahiri and shit. So, like, I feel like I give, if I'm going to give 2 chains credit for a lot of this shit, I gave him credit for with marketability, then I got to roll with the same with Joe Budden. So I would say marketability, Joe Budden. Um, and then we go to stage presence. Mm-hmm. 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 I thought about this, right? And the image I cannot get out of my head was Joe Button versus Hollow the Don. And this nigga saying a punchline and like punching the air like this, like, yeah, and doing this little kick. And it was so like, if you don't look like somebody, uncle up there, if you don't sit, that is not it, bro. That, that, so like, I think it's just hard for me to see anything else. And I see J. Cole rocking crowds, having people cry and shit. So like, and his freestyles be fucking creepy. Make you want to punch somebody. So, uh, yeah. The, uh, the stage presence and the overall J. Cole. So J. Cole won for me. And uh, this is our first 5-0 of the day. Pod Squad was with us, man. 5-0. J. Cole. I don't, I don't think that's the only time he got, like, a 5-0, too. So... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's kind of showing who's they, gonna. Actually... They, well, you got to think, J. Cole first round he was against Beanie Siegel, so uh-huh. that won't be no cut and dry. Just you know, Beanie kind of a legend out here in the game, so that was a, that was a tough competition. But uh, next week, J. Cole versus Two Chains in the final four, which leaves us in this quarterfinal round with Kendrick Lamar, Kendrick Lamar versus Rick Ross. Or push a T versus Royce five nine. Where we want to go next, fellas? Ross with the coin. Ross. Oh, Rick Ross the boss. Um. Okay, so we're going Ross. Ross. Kendrick Lamar versus Rick Ross. I'll go first here. <laughs> lyricism, it was Kendrick all day. Kendrick, one of them top tier lyricists, that just like it, it's he on he on that island of them them goats that just the way he puts shit together, the thought process he uses, the lanes he uses, the flow switches, the wide variety of songs he can even get on and. Content wise and flow wise makes sense on the song. Um, it's just ridiculous. So I gave lyricism to Kendrick Lamar. Um, he's just a, a more of a wordsmith. Um, I definitely, as far as vibe on the track, I like Ross a little better just because I can, you know, ride out to him a little more. But as far as just like technical skill with lyrics and how you put shit together and how you use words to paint a picture, Kendrick is a fucking master. So. Kendrick on, mm. on lyricism. Stage presence. It was tough, man. Stage presence. It was close. Because I've seen both of these dudes turn a show fucking down. Um, but the stages Kendrick rocks is just different from the stages Ross rocks. Kendrick rocks mm-hmm. them Kanye, Drake, uh, Jay-Z type crowd at this level in his career. So it's just a different level 
And when you're mastering stadiums and shit, yeah, you one of them ones. So uh, I gave stage presence to Kendrick. And as far as um, marketability, I actually gave this to Rick Ross. When I'm thinking marketability, um, I feel like as far as Kendrick will get it as far as record sales, concert sales, I'm not 100% sure because I feel like Ross tours more than Kendrick. Like Kendrick might make a real big bag on like the one tour he does, but he might not tour again for the next two, three years. Whereas Ross, I feel like the He's almost always on a tour, I feel like. Every time I look, his name is on the flyer. He has to hear his name on the radio and he coming to this concert. So, like, I feel like he does more of it. So, I wasn't really sure where he stood on that. But I feel like as far as with the liquor and the amount that he does from these outside sources and the fact that when I think of somebody, a kid in Japan, I feel like if I showed them a picture of both and was like, who is this? They're going to say Rick Ross. And kind of Rick Ross, Rick Ross. They gonna know him just because of his image being so big more before they would think of, oh, that's Kendrick Lamar. So I gave marketability actually to Rick Ross. So I had it 2 1. Summers. Either one of y'all wanna go? I'll go. Let's see. I do. Because this is one you really have to think about, though. Because like you said, Kendrick has, he can get different kinds of crowds. And I like them both. Or whatever. But, all right. Lyricism, I definitely went with Kendrick. And stage presence. You're right. Rick Ross tours more and Kendrick only tours every once in a while. But I feel like that's only because Kendrick only Kendrick don't have to tour all the time. This is true. Kendrick has you know, the bigger tours, but Ross has more frequent. Frequent tours. Like I don't feel like I feel like the bag that he would get from the tours that he would get or the the um, opportunities or whatever for festivals and stuff that he would get kind of outweighs the little small tours or whatever. Plus, he's one of those obscure artists that he only comes back for the music, pretty much. Like, he's really for the music. So I kind of gave him, I kind of gave Rick Ross the marketing uh, mm -hmm. on that side because outside of music, you really don't know Kendrick for that, for anything else. But he's so good at music. That's the, probably the reason yeah, why. I'm, sure um, I'm still uh, so. I, and I'm going to give I'm going to give stage presence to Kendrick just because of that or whatever. I feel like Ross. He can rock his crowds. Rock it. Probably he can rock his crowds more, but. Kendrick's crowds are so big that you can't just say, you know, you can't just. It takes more mastery to meet a rock stadium. Yeah. So I'm going to give it to Kendrick. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. They see. I started by saying, once again, Rick Ross is one of my favorite rappers. Both. Um, both. Um, Boss, 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 Um, nothing else said. Listen to a Kendrick song, listen to a Ross song. Lyricism, hands down. You can take your very best Ross song. I don't care if you have a feature or not. You can take your very best Kendrick song, feature or not. Match them up. Lyricism, hands down. We'll go to Kendrick. Um, marketability. 
tough question for me right now. That was there. the one. Um, Margaret Bell is a tough one. Ross's name is everywhere. Like, often, 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 Ross, Ross, Ross. Um, but when Kendrick does choose to, choose to make an appearance, everyone wants to see him. You feel me? It's down everything. It's like the mystery of Kendrick. So it makes it tough. Both of them could go to some of the same areas, some of the same spots, some of the same pockets when it comes to that marketability. Um, but Ross has multiple lanes of relative um, the wing spots in different cities. The yes, he does. The ability to give your children with the business. That's one thing. Yeah, that was you. So, marketability, I'm going to go with Ross. Um, stage presence. Ah, that's a tough one for me, too. Because Ross can't rock a crowd. But Kendrick got the ability to make him feel the lyrics and take him to a different level. So, I'm going to say Kendrick. 2-1. Okay. And we have our second. 5-0 of the evening, folks, because the pod squad agreed. Um, This was actually a tough round for me than I initially expected. Um, I definitely thought that was just going to be easy money, and then I went in and I started analyzing. I was like, actually, Ross is a little closer in some of these areas than I thought, so shout out to mm-hmm. Rose, but uh, the pod squad and the partners have spoken. Kendrick Lamar moves on to the final four. In our last round of the quarterfinals to determine the last member of the final four, Pusha T versus Royce, 5'9". Pat? Oh, man. That's funny. Y'all pick me first. (laughs) All right. We'll get right down to it. Um, I'm going to go to lyricism first. Cause that's easy to go ahead and knock that out of the way. I, I I gave Royce that just for the obvious reasons. Um, Pusha T has lyrics and he has bars. Royce is, is one of those people that just have bars within bars and just the smart partner that he's been in league with it's going to keep his his sword sharp, so to speak. <laughs> but all, um, of, all of his sparring partners. Yeah, exactly. So when you are constantly around that, there's no way. And I mean, you know, you're in a group with like Joel Ortiz and Crooked Eye. The, the, the mainstay of the label is Eminem or whatever. Like, Nah, it, it's no way around it. Yeah. Now marketing. I'll go back to marketing. I'll go back. Um, nah, either way, it's kind of hard for either one. It's stage presence or whatever. I I was gonna give Pusha T the stage presence. Mind you, I know Royce can rock the crowd, and I've seen them, and I've seen them slaughterhouse videos or whatever where they do rock the crowd. But I feel like Pusha T can get a lot more venues and be in bigger venues right. just because of the, the people around them. And that's the same thing with marketability. I just feel like he, I don't know, man, because Royce, you have his, 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 the past couple of years, he's been rising to fame a lot more. Um, everybody respects his, re- respects his pen. I mean, he's 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 done stuff with classic, with classic producers like Premier, but I still feel like Pussy T does a lot more stuff around outside of rap. I mean, before we even get to the fact that he's he's the president of good music and right there beside Kanye, a lot, mm-hmm. you know. He has this clothing line. He has the, like, he's on the low, has pushed the hip hop culture, like, on the low as far as, like, fashion and gear um, in, in general. And then 
He's been around for real so much. He just doesn't. He's just got a lot more stats under his belt. I mean, you got jingles and stuff that he gets checks <laughs> from from McDonald's and Arby's and stuff like that. So yes, he does. Yes, he does. He's he's done a lot of stuff outside of rap, and I'm not talking about the so-called inspiration to his rap, which is the drug game. He just does bills outside of rap that would have his name out just way more prevalent than Royce. So I uh, probably surprisingly so to a lot of people because Royce is one of my I like Royce more than put push a T. But I like I said before, if it was just lyricism, I would have probably picked Royce, but I picked Pusha T. Two one. Okay, so we got one vote for the pusher. Push. Um, Faith, you want in on this? Oh, yeah. So, marketability, push your team, hands down. Um, Royce don't get his face out there enough. Um, that's just it. Push your team puts himself out there to be marketable. Um, he's based himself. He has the ability to be part of it coming from the clips, coming to his own, and plus right. the connection with Pharrell, and just building his own knowledge based on being around them. He knows how to be marketable. Um, so that's just the same thing. Stage performance. Uh, really don't know when it comes to that one. I say it's a toss up. Because like I feel like both of them give the crowd about the same thing. They can move the crowd about the same way to me. Um, so I give it the voice. The lyrics. Sorry, Pusher. I'm biased oh. to I'm biased to VA, but I gave it the voice. So oh, I gave it the voice to one. Now that's surprising. I did not see this coming, folks. Royce two one upset um from face that's definitely not what I saw coming. I thought that was gonna be bad, but y'all definitely uh both surprised me there. Um, all right. Ooh. Oh man. Um, lyricism. It's funny his name is Push. I actually had that as a a bit of a push at first. Um. And then I went back and re-listened to like some of those old bad and ugly, uh, the good and ugly. What would they call them? The bad, bad and me, ugly. The, the bad, bad meets me the evil. evil. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Roy's different. He one of them different ones. I ain't gonna eat front. I'm gonna give him his flowers. So lyricism, he definitely has a lot more ways he can go with his lyrics. Um, and I feel like Push has almost pigeonholed himself into certain content that just doesn't make sense from him, whereas Royce can kind of go anywhere with it. Um, as far as different pockets, I definitely feel like Royce has more different cadences that I've heard him use. Um, Push kind of has that same flow on everything. Um, so, yeah, Royce for lyricism. Oh, no, didn't mean to do that. Royce for lyricism. Um, for marketability, that was easy for me. Push a T. Um, Royce not Royce got the, the Eminem bag, but Push is the president of a label that also has Kanye as the man on that, as the owner of that label. Um, his last album was great. He knows how to really get out there and put his face in the right spots. And the fact, like you said, he's flipped that music into using his music to take him into industries where like a lot of people wouldn't expect a hip hop artist to be like doing Arby's jingles and McDonald's songs. So uh, marketability, I gave it to Push. Um, as far as stage presence, I gave that to Push, man. Um, what's the five nine dry to me? He can rap his ass off, but he's not very, he don't have a lot of presence to me. Like even his great freestyles where the lyrics are great, It don't be presented well to me. Um, I feel like 
Royster Five Nine is a perfect example of a rapper that I prefer to read his lyrics than really hear him say them. So for that reason, um, push two one. And the Pod Squad agree with us. Four one. Push a T. We got a VA representative in the building. Our yes, final baby. four is Kendrick Lamar versus Pusha T and J. Cole <laughs> versus Two Chains. So um, mm. get out there and vote, Pod Squad, as we get our top two ready so we can crown our top MC of the 2000s. Um, shout out to everyone who's already been voting. And uh, just keep your votes coming in, man. Also, if you listen to this on Anchor, let us know in the voice messages what your favorite MC of the 2000s is. If you're watching this on YouTube or listening to this on anything else, let us know down in the comments how you felt about it. What did you think of it? Um, who's your favorite MC? Did we get the list right to start with? Who we leave out? Let us know down in the comments or with a voice message on Anchor. Um, and yeah, man, that's this week's episode or segment of the top MCs of the 2000s. Um, we're on that road, people. We're almost about to crown our champion.